Every year, every consumer in our country wastes 155 euros worth of food. That's the same amount as currently in this shopping cart. And when we add that all up for all inhabitants in our country, that comes down to 2.6 billion euros of food wasted annually. Let me ask you something. Who of you throws away the stalk of their broccolis? And we all know that Joel doesn't do that, as we heard this morning. But in fact, most people do. And to be honest, I did that too. But when I started diving into this subject of food waste about a year ago, I learned that there's just as many vitamins in the stalk of a broccoli as in the crown. And actually, it constitutes about one-third of the total weight of what you're paying for. So you can easily bake it, mash it, make soup out of it, cook it, whatever you like. And there's many more of these examples, like eating the core of your apple, like cutting your French beans on one side instead of two. And while 2.6 billion euros are wasted by consumers, another 2 billion never ever reaches our homes because it is wasted elsewhere in the food chain, because supermarkets change their orders in the last minute, because good weather suddenly creates more crops than expected, or because fruits and vegetables don't look like they're supposed to look. European regulations state, for example, that a cucumber can only be bended 10%. <laughs> Quite ridiculous, right? And the, the ratio between width and height of a pepper needs to be 0.8 to 1. <laughs> Why? Because we designed a food chain to be as financially efficient as possible. And we all know that straight cucumbers are more easily transported and equal peppers are more easily divided into packages. And the waste of perfectly edible food is like a natural consequence of this food chain we designed. So while we have this huge problem of food waste, we have another problem. Because 1.4 million people in our country are living below the poverty line. And this number is growing while we speak. Single parents, entrepreneurs running out of business, anyone can end up in this situation. And those people do not have sufficient and healthy food on their daily menu. The Dutch food banks are handing out 100,000 food packages every week to these people. But in fact, they can only help 7% of these 1.4 million. And these food packages mostly look like this, lacking any kind of healthy fruits and vegetables. And 1.4 million people might sound like a lot, but in fact, we need only one out of 20 tangerines. We need only 5% of what is now wasted in order to help those 1.4 million people. And building that bridge between food waste and food poverty is my personal challenge. I'm an industrial designer educated to design new products with the newest technologies. And with the Internet of Things and mobile devices and big data, we all have the opportunity to connect with anyone, any kind of information, anywhere we are. And knowing that this technology is out there, and at the same time, knowing the severity of this food waste problem, I just cannot keep closing my eyes anymore. So, why is it not happening yet? Why is so much food still wasted? In order to answer that question, let's look at the food chain 50 years ago. We bought, indeed, our milk at the farm, our meat at the butcher, instead of the supermarket, and our bread at the bakery. So the distance between producer and consumer was as close as it could be. But when we look at the food chain right now, we have no clue anymore how much time and energy and resources are invested in our food. Did you know, for example,
that it takes 17 cents to only pick a cucumber from the plant. So you would still have to add the water, the vitamins, the land, the transport, the packaging, the processing, and don't forget the benefits for supermarkets. So isn't it quite ridiculous that we're paying only 70 cents for it in a supermarket? And not knowing this true value of food, the true cost of food, makes it far more likely for us to throw parts of it away. If we want to make our food chain more sustainable, we have to close this distance between producer and consumer. Looking at one of the big waste producers in our country, country the agricultural sector, food waste is a daily business. Research shows that between 1 and 10% of fruits and vegetables are never sold. And taking the biggest cucumber farmer in our country, he produces the quite impressive amount of 2.7 million cucumbers every week. And with the quite minimal amount of just 1% waste, he already fills up this complete container every week. And it's wasted. A complete container every week. And while they are wasted, the production of these cucumbers does lead to more emission of greenhouse gases. It uses water for irrigation, land use, and it increases the laws of biodiversity. So, what's there to be done that's better, that's more sustainable? And let's, let's look at this example by using the food waste pyramid. This is a tool that is designed to show the alternatives for dealing with food surplus and, and their priority. And disposing these cucumbers is like the worst option of all, at the total bottom of the pyramid. Instead, there's far more sustainable options, like reducing it, donating it to people, or feeding it to livestock. And for this reason, me and three other entrepreneurs have started the Surplus Project. And we're br building this bridge between food waste on one hand and food poverty on the other. We are working together with Dutch food banks in order to assign new value to food surplus. Indeed, surplus, because it is not waste. It is perfectly edible food. We're connecting farmers with a surplus available to local food banks. And at this point, they're not reaching each other, simply because it's very hard to find the exact right person to set up a collaboration and to adjust it every time to the dynamics of food production for supermarkets. So we have designed an application for farmers, Ik heb surplus, Dutch for I own surplus, and we have designed an application for food banks. Ik wil surplus, Dutch for I want surplus. And connecting these stakeholders through this digital medium makes it very easy to find one another. It creates overall transparency on where to find surplus and how it is redistributed. And it makes it possible to create an automated connection based on the amount of fruits and vegetables that are available. So looking at the cucumber farmer, for example, he doesn't want to throw these cucumbers away because he has worked really hard to make them grow. And it feels completely silly for this guy to pay a waste company to come and pick them up, pick them up to dispose them. So he can very easily use the surplus application to enter the amount of cucumbers he has, the date of availability, and an automated connection is created with the network of food banks and connected to a nearby food bank that can handle this amount of surplus cucumbers. And the fact that is, this is all visible in the entire network of stakeholders creates an awareness about the value of this surplus food. At this point, we're running a fully working pilot in the province of North Brabant. And in 2016, we want to promote this project in our entire country. But there's way more we can do, like connecting it to transport, empty trucks that are now already on the road to move surplus. Or recruiting volunteers for the crops that are now left out on the field, because it costs money to harvest crops. 
But to be honest, surplus is just like a medicine. And we would rather need not be here at all. And this is where you guys come in. Because it is your job to make sure that we can disappear in the future, that surplus is not necessary in the future. And for that, you will have to start changing the choices you make today. You take about seven seconds in a supermarket to make your choices. So you buy the things that look familiar to you. You buy straight cucumbers and one colored peppers. But in fact, these choices directly influence what a supermarket orders from a farmer and thus directly influences what a farmer has to throw away. So instead, start taking your time for the food you buy. Start visiting your local weekly market because taking this time for buying food increases your awareness for the true value of food. It increases the chances for wonky fruits and vegetables to be eaten. And in the end, it increases your chance that your shopping cart will not be filled with 155 euros of food wasted. So I'm asking you, if you want to stop food waste in our country, start cha changing the way you buy your food.